Vince has the PTSD, man. I can't help it. I'm excited. Oh, so, yeah. It's a crappy team against the Titans. Everybody has this as a win. And it's just like, I, I have it as a win too, but part of me is still scared. Like, damn it. Is that is that bad? No. I made a pretty significant bet today about – I, 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 I still have the Bears to, to win, but I do have the Titans covering um, plus four and a half. I know you're not much of a gambler, but to basically you know lay that out for you, it's that the Titans, even if they lose, will only lose by less than five points. Gotcha. I, they're basically saying there's no chance that the Bears win like 27-20. I don't see them winning by a full touchdown. I have the Titans covering. I have the bear. I have the over 45, 44 and a half. Yeah. So a 24 to 21 point lead or a game bears winning would win me quite a chunk, chunk of change, but I think you just gave your prediction out there. <laughs> Low key bears. I did 24, 21 according to David, right? Yeah. Let's get to this then. So okay. I've been doing a lot in the last two days of like just analyzing the Titans. I've been doing all my deep dive on the Titans just to cut. Kind of, I have no feel for this team as of a week ago. And so I said, you know, I, I have to figure out what the hell this team is. The, the things I've gathered is that I think this team is in a little bit more of a rebuild than they wanted to lead on. The majority of that is the, they're filling some pieces in with veterans that are over the hill or, just kind of stopgap measures um, to figure out if Will Levis is actually an NFL quarterback. Um, the, thing, the thing they have going for them, though, on the offense is the offensive line. Exactly. Which makes it a lot easier for a guy like Will Levis to sit there and go out and have good days. Tony Pollard's not a bad running back either. Like, he's, he's all right. You know what I mean? So... I mean, if you feel like commenting on the whole situation, feel free and interrupt me, but I'll, I'll give you how I looked at this game breakdown wise. So looking at their roster, I think the matchup is much closer. The The fact that people are penciling in this win, if I had zero emotional investment in this game, I honest to God would be taking Tennessee right now on money line. I can't bring myself to doing that. The but last you know time it. I... But the last time I <laughs> the last time I predicted a loss, I was right with Green Bay with an opener. Um, you know what the record for first overall pick quarterbacks is? Last oh and twelve. Oh and 14, oh, 14 and one. One tie. Oh, okay. I mean, that's just yeah. Yeah. Kind of relevant, yeah. But um, no, I know. But but it's still his. Like, no, I, I history's not on our side with that in the analytic, and it's very drastically one way. So. If you look at the way this team lines up, um, they have a rookie nose tackle. And then funny enough, do you know who that is? It's Tavondre Sweat, guy that we liked out of Texas. He probably got drafted a little bit too high. But Tavondre Sweat is going to be starting their nose tackle. Um, they don't have like absolute bums on either side. Sebastian Joseph Day, I believe he was like a full 17-game starter last year. Jeffrey Simmons, um, Pro Bowler, absolute beast. Talking a lot of shit this summer about Caleb already. So he's going to be kind of pumped up on, on the defensive line. Let's hope the Bears' offensive line is good enough or ready enough to handle him. The other side, the linebackers are... They got Legereus Sneed, too, from the Chiefs, didn't they? They did. And so their their linebackers are not bums. Um, but they have Harold Landry, Ernest Jones, Kenneth Murray. And Chido Bay Awuzie was the starting quarterback on the, on the Bengals. And I believe they were ready to go into this season with that guy, basically their number one cornerback. And Legereus Sneed just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And, you know, that turned into their second cornerback, who's, again, pretty damn good. Quandre Diggs as their free safety. I believe that's a Seattle kind of rollover. So he was not like a bum. He's definitely on the smaller side. He's on the older side. He's 31 now, but he is an NFL former Pro Bowl safety Kind of one of those sneaky free safeties that might bait and switch Caleb like a rookie into some sort of stupid mistake. Amani Hooker um, with Jamal Adams as a backup. Amani Hooker, same thing. Not a bum. Yep. Uh, 26 year old. He's uh, quick, fast. Not you know whatever. It's he's a good player. He's a fourth round pick. Uh, 2019 uh, full. I think he's like a full 17 games. 
basically what we're saying is like the defense is not a slouch and that's basically where they match up really well. So for offensive game plan, I heavily believe that even more so DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift. Um, I was going to say the same thing. You, you're going to have to run the ball. You got to run the ball and get the ball out of Caleb's hands, man. First few weeks, especially that was kind of the game plan that they presented to the team, to the, to the fans, to the media. They presented that they were just going to, you know, basically, Hey, you don't, it's not a Ferrari right now. You're just kind of, you're, you're running in like second and third gear. You're not shifting up yet. You know, just kind of hand the ball off, dump the ball off, let your playmakers make plays. And then eventually in the season, once you get your feet wet, that's when you can kind of come out of nowhere and start making the plays. So that's got to be the game plan. Um, yeah, I mean, the strength of our team early on has to be the defense. So, like, you're right. Defense don't lean on, the ball, you know, yeah. you shouldn't, shouldn't have to lean on Caleb in week one. And I know you said that very early on in episodes ago. You were like, if you have to lean on Caleb in week one, that's a problem. So, that's a bigger yeah. team-wide problem. Yeah, exactly. 100%. 